right, welcome back everyone. So today we have the pleasure of watching the Uncharted The Lost Legacy E3 extended gameplay demo that they showed off behind closed doors at this past E3. A lot of people are raving about the interactions between Nadine and Chloe and the fact that it feels so natural, it feels very Uncharted, it feels uh, like their relationship is going to be different and unique from let's say Nathan Drake and Sam. Um, it's going to be a different type of relationship, not so much the sibling competitive type of relationship that they had. Uh, this one is definitely more proper business-like, but they are two different characters. Nadine is the more, uh, I don't want to say ruthless, but uh, definitely the more professional. And, um, and Chloe is definitely the more freelancer type. So that could make some very, very interesting type of uh, narrative situations between the two and the kind of... Um, adventures they go on and the problems they get in. So not only that, but the, uh, let me see over here. I want to make sure I pronounce it. Asav, which is the antagonist of this game, uh, looks super interesting. And you know, every Uncharted game has an, has an antagonist, uh, but this one in particular looks like they're trying something very, very new. He seems intellectual. He seems like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, with Rafe, it very much felt like an angry teenager trying to prove something to somebody and um, Asav seems like the type of person that uh, I guess he's talked about how he feels like he rightfully owns um, what they're going after in the the tusk of Ganesh so that's the big thing those are the plot points that we have to really focus on as far as this trailer goes and what I really want this trailer hit on is what is the nuts and bolts of uncharted gameplay uh, what is the minute-to-minute -minute stuff going to feel like? Is it even more of uh, action-packed than Uncharted 4 was? Um, are they having a good balance between the quiet moments and the more intense moments? And uh, I really want to see if they try anything new as far as gameplay mechanics. Um, but yet again, this is a demo. This is only a slice of the game. So there could be other aspects of the game, big chunks, that could introduce new things, and this one might be more traditional in that sense. So, let's go ahead and watch the Uncharted The Lost Legacy E3 extended gameplay now. Looks gorgeous. Looks bloody gorgeous, man. When you have a strong, you know, art team, strong art direction. Oh, they're about to fall. Worth it? Impressive. Yeah. No. Oh. I like that a lot. How do Just I get off this thing? That little thing Good that Nadine question. expressed there was like, wow, I've never been on an adventure like this. Is this what, like, Drake used to talk about? Bloody gorgeous, man. Wow. Okay. Follow me. We knew the grappling hooker would be back. We already knew that. The vistas are... Right. Reckon we can cut through the city and get back to the gate. I'll take point. Stay close. Lead the way. I don't know how they make forest environments, jungle environments, with so much foliage, Maybe. look so good. But check out this watch. It's, it's incredibly impressive, man. Look at it from that old man in the city. Dumb bastard. Didn't give it up easily. Right. You take left, yeah, I take I right. Remember. What the? <laughs> that works too. That's the scene that. Probably more where that came from. Right. People were talking about. It's a very cute character moment. For Nadine specifically, because when you play her as in, in Uncharted 4, it's she's a beast, so it would make sense that she would do something like that. Nothing personal. 
There. I'll bet the aqueducts rooted through that structure. The way they nail the bounce light. Clear. Keep an eye out. Ooh. All right, here we go. Turret truck. Oh, I love destructible cover, man. Good aim. So I'm glad the turret truck feels as hectic as it usually feels. Just doesn't matter around every corner, constantly firing at you. You need to be quick, you need to be responsive. <laughs> yep, feels like Uncharted, all right. That's a good feeling. I love it that Nadine is kind of pushing you to. Assistant, asshole, aren't you? To maximize your quickness. Is it me, or does it seem like the AI is 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 even more responsive than it was in U4? I really do feel like Nadine is doing a better job at responding to certain situations than Sam is. That Sam was. Oh god. You alright? I think so. Oh shit. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. Where are we? No idea. But at least we're not in the line of fire. Well, hopefully there's another way out. I love how Uncharted can go from action to just quiet. I suppose that thing on the floor is gameplay in a second. See those channels? I doubt they were meant for water. With oh. no cutscene in between, just just like that. I love that change of pace because it's surprising. It hits you. It's like, oh, am I done? Am I done? It's good. Sorry. Are we good? Are we in the clear? Some of the best flashlight okay. lighting I've ever seen. There's a way through. <laughs> Poor bastards. I don't know. I'd prefer being left to rot in a cell to getting tortured. Duly noted. That looks photo real, straight up. I do. Yep, there's the aqueduct. Okay. Up here, there's a breach. Oh. 
Oh god. There he is, there he is. The Eye of Shiva. That's impressive. My man worked for a week and turned up nothing. They probably hired the wrong expert. Perhaps. You know, a Hoysala poet once wrote of a young king who showed mercy and thus ended our rituals. But the old kings, they understood that progress demands sacrifice. <laughs> Is that what you tell your men? of war, these aqueducts, they would run red through the capital. Those who would not fight had to be used to inspire those who would. <laughs> I love the way he got up there. Hopefully, or if I know my Uncharted well, um, he gets distracted right in that moment. Somebody calls his name. Somebody says something to him right at that moment and um man i really really like asav a lot i love the way he speaks i love his accent um i love just his he doesn't go on tangents but he he has a purpose to everything he's saying even though it seems like he's going off on a little bit of an adventure when he speaks right or he's thinking about a particular something in order to relate it to what's happening in the moment and uh, those kind of moments between Chloe and Asav are vital for the experience. I really, really want that to work well. Um, now, as far as, you know, the gameplay stuff is concerned, I thought just the moment-to-moment -moment stuff, I feel like they checked off all the Uncharted boxes, right? You have uh, the destructible cover. You have the grappling hook moments. You have the turret truck moments where you're, you know, running away from the turret truck, running away from... Um, you know, heavy gunfire, and uh, and at the same time having to use your gun in order to, you know, get to, you know, Route B or whatever, you know, your destination. And right after that, it goes to a quiet moment as well, where you could feel like you could look around this area, kind of use it as a as a place to explore a little bit, and then right again, right to a cutscene with an interesting moment between Chloe and Asav. My camera always turns off, but the interesting moments between Chloe and Asav are, are just really important to this game, are really important to the overall story, to make you feel like you're invested in Chloe's arc. Because Asav is, they need to make sure it's not, oh, just another guy in the way of, of your treasure, of your ultimate mission, right? So Asav has to kind of play the, 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 in, the more interesting antagonist, where you really do have to work harder to create a meaningful connection between him and Chloe. Um, you really have to find something there. He can't just be, oh, it's just another guy that's in the way, and you know, Chloe's arc is the thing that's important in her personal life, and you know, her relationship with her father that was hinted at in the Riverboat Revelations trailer, uh, or cinematic uh, cutscene. And uh, all of those things put together creates for an interesting dynamic between the two. Now, where Nadine plays in that, it'll be interesting to see in f as far as the interactions between. Uh, you know, Asav and Chloe. What does Nadine's role in that situation mean for the overall chemistry between all three? And, you know, the ultimate most important thing is Chloe's arc. Um, what does it mean for everyone? Uh, does Nadine cause trouble in, in, in you know, Chloe's ultimate mission? Um, does Nadine's ultimate mission uh, become trouble for Chloe? I mean, I think I just said the same thing, but twice in different ways. Um, but overall, I just really, really like Asav as a character. It will be interesting to see how he plays in the overall story and what significance he has, if any, on the backstory of Chloe or on just the ultimate mission and what, the reason why 
oh Jesus, the reasons why she's getting the treasure. So we have checked all gameplay boxes, which I really like, and I hope because they kept on hinting that it gets wider and wider as an Uncharted game. Uh, some of the biggest, widest levels. Um, I really like that idea because that means more exploration. That means uh, more moments of surprise, of action. Maybe a, a, like I remember the Madagascar level where you're in your um, your Jeep or your four wheel or whatever, and uh, you there's different optional encounters that you can get in. And I really hope there's more of that in this and um, more optional uh, you know exploration as well. And uh, as far as they nail all those boxes that you four had, plus you have an interesting story, plus you have uh, you know funny quips and interactions between Chloe and Nadine, and Asav is a meaningful antagonist that actually plays a heavy role in the overall story arc, then, um, then we have a winner here, I think. And as far as it being a six to 10 hour experience, you know, at $40, I'm going to be happy within that time frame. But in, in reality, the way I look at games, it's all about the way the experience feels to me overall. It could be two hours and I'll pay $100 for it if it really does impact me that much. You know, I don't need a game to be 100 hours as long as I feel like it was meaningful. So, you know, the, the toughest thing that Uncharted The Lost Legacy has going for it is returning to the Uncharted universe and making it feel like it's meaningful. Making it feel like you didn't just mash all these things together to sell some DLC or because you had to check, you know, the DLC. We said we were going to have a story expansion, so we have to do that. I want it to feel like it was meaningful, like it all had a purpose and it's important. Okay? That makes any sense. But um, knowing the team, knowing, um, you know, Sean and um, knowing uh, the creative directors um, that are, you know, working on this game, I really, really, really do have high hopes for this game for those reasons. You know, Kurt is uh, is a fabulous level designer, so the fact that he's getting game director on this is, is really cool, and uh, I can't wait to see exactly how creative both Sean and Kurt get um, as far as expanding, you know, what we know as Uncharted gameplay and story. So, uh, yes, that is it for the Uncharted The Lost Legacy E3 extended gameplay. Let me know what you guys think about The Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy. Sorry for the uh, camera cut, but you know, it is what it is. Sometimes it just shuts off on me and I don't really have any control over it. I'll stop burping. I feel like I have hiccups now, but I'm all right. I think it was a milkshake. All right, anyway, let me know what you guys think, of course, in the comments. If you hate me, you know what to do. If you like me, you know what to do, and I'll see you guys all on the next one.